we're going to focus on standards of English convention, otherwise known as grammar. It amounts to one third of the entire exam, so it's important to know. The SAT breaks it out in basically two sections, boundaries and form, structure, and sense. In reality, this section includes multiple skills and multiple question prompts. Here we're gonna teach you how to identify those prompts and how to solve them. This is not going to be a grammar lesson. We are not teaching you grammar in this video. I assume you know how to combine independent clauses with a period, a semicolon, or a comma coordinated conjunction, that you know your restrictive, non-restrictive comma rules, you know what a long dash is, a colon, etc. If you need that information, go to our lessons on the topic or any other quality lessons for it. This is a lesson on how to exploit this section for your benefit and a better score. To show you more precisely what I'm talking about by example, here is a question format that appeared frequently on the old paper SAT, the writing and language exam. It still appears on the new digital SAT as you can see, but let's take a quick look at it. If I did a vertical scan knowing it's a grammar question, I'll see verbs and I'll specifically see promote and promotes. Two simple present tense verbs, one is plural, one's not. Dogs, plural, walk without an S. A dog, singular, walks with an S. So this will help me decide. And then there's going to be a perfect tense option and a progressive tense option. They're almost always wrong. It's worth mentioning at this point, there's no fundamental grammar reason the other two answers have to be wrong. It just so happens it always turned out to be that case. In order to solve these, all I would have to do is start with the verb and jump over my dependent clause, which is almost always the case. The subject noun is not usually near the verb. And in this case, if I skip beyond this dependent clause, I will see the subject noun is market, which is singular. So a singular market promotes with an S and I immediately knew the answer. There are several examples just like this on the new digital SAT. This video will focus on boundaries because boundaries alone within grammar contain many skills and many question prompts. So let's start off with independent clauses and independent dependent clauses. How do we identify many of the boundary problems and what is the process we take to quickly and efficiently answer them correctly? They all start with the same words, conventions of standard written English in the question prompt. Right away, I know I'm looking at a grammar question. So I do a quick vertical scan to see if I'm dealing with verbs or if I'm dealing with some kind of different punctuation issues here. Looks like I've got a parallel structure, CE making, CE making, CE making, CE making. They're all very much the same. And I've got no period, period, comma, semicolon that's a good tip off i'm looking at some kind of independent dependent clause proper punctuation here we have yet another example continents geological all the same parallel structure but i have colons semicolons commas no commas walls with commas no commas the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look for duplicate independent clause combinations remember we can combine independent clauses with semicolons a period, so semicolon period are basically the same thing for our purposes, or a comma coordinating conjunction. That's one of our fanboys, for and nor but or yet so. So right away I see CE period making, CE semicolon making, ignore the capital versus the not capital, that's just a function of starting a new sentence. Those are exactly the same answers, therefore they're both wrong. So right away I know I'm not looking to combine independent clauses. I immediately am looking at a dependent clause issue with no comma or a comma, and I have to figure it out. Another quick example. I do a vertical scan. I see a semicolon continents, semicolon geological, continents, period, geological. Those are the same answers. I can eliminate them, and now I'm looking at a dependent clause situation with no comma or possibly, in this case, a colon. So if you're able to eliminate two choices at the outset, that's great. You're down to two dependent clause type solutions you need to review. In many cases, you'll find there's just one independent clause punctuation. You won't be able to eliminate anything. Here, I just have one walls period with. The other ones are comma with, with no comma, so with. 
So right away, the first answer I'm going to check is the independent clause answer, because that is more often than not, a lot more often than not, the correct answer. There's no grammar reason it could not be one of the other three dependent clause type options, but in point of practice, it's almost always that one separate independent clause option that works. In this case, if I look at it, I'll read the part before my punctuation. In 2010, archaeologist Noel Hidalgo Tan was visiting the 12th century temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia when he noticed markings of red paint on the temple walls, period. Then I would start a new sentence. With the help of digital imaging techniques, comma, he discovered the markings to be part of an elaborate mural containing over 200 paintings. Before is an independent clause. After is an independent clause. I need my independent clause punctuation. Sure enough, that's the right answer. Here's another example. In this case, comma, but is my independent clause punctuation. The others, a comma, no comma, and but without the comma, are not independent clause combinations. So the first answer I'm going to check is B, that independent clause combination. Again, I'm going to read the sentence right up to the punctuation and then the sentence after it and determine if they're independent or dependent clauses. That's always my next step. Okay, here's the sentence. Many, including poet Alexander Pope, were skeptical, comma. Okay, many, including Alexander Pope, were skeptical. That's an independent clause, comma. But historians have determined that Shakespeare's company did perform a play called Cardinio. So that's another independent clause. They can stand alone as sentences. I must have my independent clause punctuation between them. The other answers are not correct. This happens more often than you might suspect. I don't mean to suggest that every answer choice will have independent one or multiple independent clause combinations. Look at this example. There are no semicolons, comma, coordinating conjunctions, or periods. It's all long dashes, commas. This is going to be a dependent clause parenthetical issue right from the get-go. Another presentation often includes the colon. I said I'd come back to this example. We eliminated the two independent clause options, and we're down to what would typically be our parenthetical or dependent clause options. But one option is replaced with a colon, which could be an answer. And if we look at it in this case, the colon does make sense here. Ming Tang in 2019 offers a new explanation for the origin of Earth's continents. Colon. What follows a colon is going to be an example or an explanation of what came before the colon. In this case, it's going to be an explanation of origin, the origin of Earth's continents. Well, it is just that. These geological structures called arcs, towering ridges that form when a dense oceanic plate subducts under a less dense continental plate. These are examples of the origin of Earth's continents. An excellent use of a colon here. 